Hi guys, my name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be showing you guys my favorite romance authors and then a couple of my favorite books by those authors. Okay, so in this video I do have paranormal romances, I have contemporary romance authors, I have um, historical romances. Is that everybody? Yeah, that's, that's the pile I got here. Now y'all know I love me some urban fantasy, but I did not include this in this one because urban fantasy, it usually has romance kind of in the background. And for these I picked like straight up these are romance books. Romance is at the forefront, romance is the main plot. So these are like um, episodic as opposed to being like how Kate and Kern are one of my favorite romances but they're not romance books. Does that make sense? Yeah. I have another video planned where I'll be talking about my favorite romances but that one requires a little more work and effort and it is not feasible if I'm trying to get a video out today because it's already 6 p.m. So let's do it. Alright so first up I have um, Jennifer Ashley. This is a I believe she writes historical also but her one of my favorite paranormal romance series is Shifters Unbound. Of course they are shifter romances and these are set in a world where shifters are kind of made to conform. People know about them but they have to wear collars and they have to live in little separate shifter towns um, away from humans. They're not allowed to have make more than a certain amount of money. They are not allowed to have you know nice things, very up-to-date technology. They can only have like everything that they have is monitored and regulated. I've been reading these series for quite a while. This is one of my favorite shifter romance series. Like a lot of shifter romance series now, I really kind of don't like them, but this one remains one of my favorite. I think this one, Pride Mace, is the first book in the Shifters Unbound series and it is the first book that I had ever read by this author. And then after that, every time I saw a Shifters Unbound book, I picked it up. Had to have it, had to read it. Then I have the Immortals After Dark series by Chris Nicole, or rather Chris Nicole, who writes the Immortals After Dark series. This one, I want to say, is the first book I had ever read in the series, Shadows Claim. It was either this one or um, A Hunger Like No Other. Um, I think those two are the first two that I read. They're out of order, obviously. A Hunger Like No Other is book two, and then this one is like, I don't know, why can't these have fucking numbers? This one's number 13. So suffice to say I read them severely out of order, but this one remains one of my favorites. Now, thing to understand about Cressley Cole is that yes, her books are kind of formulaic, but to be fair, all romance novels are formulaic. We know, we know the couple's gonna get together, they're gonna be hesitant to get together, they're finally gonna get together, something, one of them is gonna fuck it up, and then they fix it at the end. I mean, that's all romance novels. Like, they're all happily ever after. Otherwise, it's not romances. Romance is a secondary plot in something else. But, so in that way, um, they are formulaic, they're very tropey, but they're also entertaining as fuck. This is an author that no matter what the hell it is, if I see her name is on it, I'm going to fucking pick it up and buy it. I have only read, there's only one book in this series that I have not read and it's a novella. Hold on, how many, how many are there? There are 18 published at present. I have read all of them except for number 17, which is a novella called Shadow Seduction. Um... I'm looking at this now and finding out that Monroe's story is coming out next month. <laughs> oh yes, it's about to go down. I'm so ready. I love her books. And this is now, this is also an author that does not just throw out books like two, three, four a year. They come out once a year, maybe once every other year, but I have not noticed the decline in quality of her books like I have with some other authors who have series that are like 20, 30 books long and then it's just like, stop it already. I don't get that with this author. I fucking love these books. Now, Immortals After Dark series is a series that is, um, like I said, it's paranormal romance. It has shifters, it has demons, it has witches, it has vampires, it has um, succubi, it has combinations of all thereof, like part human, part any of those things, two of those things mixed together. It has like a rom-com kind of a humor to it, but it's not like overly cheesy that I've noticed. They're just very fun. Um, paranormal romance reads and I fucking love them. So in this one Prince Trahan is a assassin basically and on the job he comes across Bettina and then breaks all of his assassin -y rules to kind of get closer to her. He discovers that she is his mate 
and thus interest himself and for real breaking like all of the don't be seen don't be heard don't be discovered rules by entering in the competition that her family is holding to marry her off in this competition he's really not worried about surviving because he is an assassin and last man standing is the winner but there is this balance of you know brutally killing off the competition and not scaring her away because she thinks this competition is like knuckleheaded bullshit so like I want to win and not die but also like not scare you off in the process type of a thing love this book like I said it was the first one I think of hers that I read when was this published that can't be right I've been reading these longer than this 2012 so maybe it is the first one of hers that I read and after that I just binged them and went crazy so I have a lot of them in paperback I have like a handful of them in hardcover but whenever I see these in this one that I don't have in hardcover I pick them up sometimes if I'm not sure if I have it in paperback I pick them up I have read damn near all of these things like let's see so I'm gonna put like the footage over there as I'm scrolling through it as you can see I have read all of these there's only like the novella that I haven't read literally that's it that's the novella and yep these are the new ones that are coming up I can't wait I'm so excited Chrysler Cole also writes historical romances I've read some of them they are hard to damn find though so I may have to suck it up and just get them in um, Kindle, but I want the physical ones. But yeah, they're a little harder to find. And she also wrote some contemporary romances that were hot. The only series that I haven't read part or any part of is her YA series, and I'm just a little scared to go there, but we'll see. Next, I have some contemporary romances. First up, I have Helen Hang, the author of The Kiss Quotient. I love this book so much. It wasn't for everybody. I don't know why some people didn't like it. I read this book for like in love a or contemporary a or something of the other um, late last year. And after that I became a damn obsessed. So I actually also read The Bride Test. I had an arc of that and this author is going to be an auto buy for me. This one in particular is about this, um, she's not an actuary, I think she's an accountant who is autistic or on the spectrum and it's about her romance. She feels like very awkward. She acknowledges that she is awkward or that her behavior comes off as awkward to other people and in an effort to kind of get better at relationships she hires an escort. This book is a lot hotter than I thought it was and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said she is an auto buy author for me from now on. I'm lucky enough to catch this like this is her first book so there's like not even catching up. I've already read her other one and now just like as she puts them out I'm just gonna sop those suckers up. Then I have Beverly Jenkins. Ooh child. So this woman has been writing books for quite a while and they are incredible. This is another author who has a whole bunch of books and they do not decrease in quality in any way shape form or fashion. She writes contemporary and she writes historical and she writes YA historical. Now hers are another of the books that are kind of harder for me to find but I'm getting there. The reason they're hard to find is because this is a um a black woman who writes romances about people of color and the historical ones are hard to find but child they are incredible. All of her books like the historical accuracy, the, the detail, the research that goes into them and it's kind of one of the she's one of those authors that no matter what you think you know historically every hit one of her historical romance novels you always learn something and she always always has like these crazy complicated heroines who they're they just like strong in the way of if you've grown up around a lot of black women you're familiar with and I really love that this one in particular is one of my favorites this one is a contemporary one this is like a kind of a thriller romance or like a mystery romance kind of um in this one there is this scientist named Adam who is being targeted uh, by this group for an invention of his and so he hires out uh, or rather he's contracted the government contracts out for him Max who is his security detail he is not expecting Max to be like a six foot something svelte svelte <laughs> sexy woman with like snakes and cowboy boots of Stetson and two giant fucking Rottweilers he doesn't know whether he's attracted to her or scared of her and then it just goes from there I love this one so much and you can tell I've had it for a while it's beat up look at all of the lines and the like breaks in the spine I have been reading these books for years and years and years and I never get tired of rereading them ever then I have Julie Garwood who is a historical romance author and these are some of the older historical romance books these I have been reading since I was a kid they are not good entry books probably for people who are not fans of historical romance because they are um a product of their time they're very tropey 
and they don't subvert really any of those things except for a couple unlike Tessa Dare who we'll get to later she subverts the fuck out of everything but I loves her Julie Garwood these are all um like Saxons and Normans or English and Scottish or some kind of like breakdown like that um all of her couples are either like one's a Saxon one's a Norman one's English one's Scottish and so there's always that um, religious and cultural and political tension as well as the romance. Um, hers tend to be younger heroines who are with these very alpha male like warrior characters from like how when is this 1200 something? Oh 1860 for this one. Well this one's more modern. This is a bad one to pick up. Saving Grace. This one's I guarantee you older. Yeah see this one's 1200s these i fucking love so i have in my lap three of my favorite books by her the first one and these are in no particular order is saving grace saving grace is one of the the um english nobility and the scottish laird mixes in this one johanna's widowed early at 16 but her husband was like a crazy abusive asshole when she when she's widowed in order to kind of keep her from being married off to another abusive jerk her brother arranges a marriage between her and gabriel who is a very i don't, don't want to say well to do he's a very scary scottish laird who is known for being a ruthless soldier and rumor has it that he killed his first wife now joanna's brother doesn't believe this but the rumors make joanna very frightened considering the husband that just died who used to beat her now because of her timid nature and because of her wariness of her husband because her husband's huge way bigger than you know the older feeble husband that she had those abusive she's very wary of him she's very wary of her surroundings and because of that everyone mistakes like her trauma history for being just she's a stere a, a, a weak English woman. There's also because of like the rumors that he killed his first wife there's a little bit of mystery there so what happened to his first wife becomes you know an issue when the person who actually killed the first wife is like oh you gonna marry again nah bro we not having this shit. So that's a little bit of mystery it has um some of the historical stuff and oh, some of the historical stuff is a historical novel but it also has like a very it, a more subtle sense of humor like it has like if you like Outlander and has like that sort of sense of humor where it's not really um if you can pick it up in things that aren't like spoken modernly does that make any sense anyway I've been reading these since I was a kid my mom loves her books this is another author who I'd be hard pressed to find a book of hers that I have not read um there's also The Prize which takes place in about the same era but let me double check she always puts dates 1066 so this one is earlier than that one by 200 years this one is set in this kind of like tumultuous time period in which in which the Saxons have been invaded by Normandy now Nicola one of the Saxons is hesitant to turn over her land her brothers her family they're all part of their soldiers or part of a resistance or both and they all kind of left Nicola to fend for herself Nicola has been fighting off Norman invaders <laughs> people trying to take over her castle because her castle is on a pretty um, important piece of land a, a pretty beneficial piece of land so she's been fighting off these invaders while her family is just either have they've been killed off or they just never showed the fuck back up. The Norman King has been sending invader after invader after invader and this woman in 1066 or 1070 whatever has been fighting them off on her own. Finally they send Baron Royce, is it Royce? Yeah, Baron Royce who is one of the uh, scarier and more effective <laughs> warriors. He sends Baron Royce and Baron Royce finally captures her and she's drawn back into the Norman courts and as a prize for her like since she proved to be such a worthy adversary kind of they told her okay we were just gonna marry you off to whoever the hell because I want this land but you know since you've given us the runaround for a woman that's pretty fucking impressive to tell you what here are all our eligible knights bitch you choose who you gonna marry you gotta marry like just get the fuck over that but I'll let you pick and she ends up picking Baron Royce who was the person that finally got her out of her home not because she necessarily has any feelings for him even though it plays a part of it but it's more so to torture him like you were going to turn me over to these people you have no qualms about dragging me out of my house using trickery to get me out of my house you even made me start to have feelings for you you don't want to get married me neither guess what bitch you stuck with me now what and then there is for the roses this one's sex police in the 1800s this one has um mary rose who is part of this kind of found family of little thugs that grew up on the street um one of which the older brother was a runaway slave named Adam and then they found Mary Rose in the trash and because they found Mary Rose named her took her in 
raised her as their sister. They kind of got their lives together, got a house, and just did all the things because they were determined to teach her how to be a proper lady and not be, you know, ragamuffins. They've also adopted Adam, the runaway slave. They've adopted his mother as their own mother. So she's named after um, Adam's mom and one of their other mothers, the only two who have any memory of their families. Mary Rose, um, because they found her in the trash. There's mystery there about who she really is, where she came from, why they put her in the trash. And then later on, the person who is sent to basically find her and take her back to her real family falls in love with her. So now, because he's in love with her, he's kind of in this place where he has this duty to return her to her, you know, the family that birthed her, the family she was stolen away from. But she also has this duty to not upset her horribly by making sure that her found family stays a part of her life. This one is, I really like, all of the, all of the males, all of the male love interests in these books are very alpha males, but this one in particular I think is Harrison. He is just very, like, blunt. Like, at one point I think Mary Rose did not want anybody to know that they were together because if that was the case she would have had to have married him and gone back with him. So she would try to keep it secret and then he would just flat out, like, drag her in front of her brothers and went, you know, I slept with her so we're getting married not even scared that they were gonna string him the hell up he's just like flat out this is what it is yep I slept with your sister get the fuck over it you can't do nothing about it now I don't know I really like these but again they are a product of their time so they're a very traditional you know alpha male and weaker female until the female is not as weak as you thought but they're still weaker than the heroines of the more modern romances I typically like to read so I am one of those people I do like really tropey romances I, I'm really stereotypical tropey romances with like the traditional um roles in them just as much as I like my badass strong female characters like my Mercy Thompson's my um Kate Daniels my and uh Nevada Baylor's <laughs> I had to think about it and then lastly I have Tessa Dare now Tessa Dare is an author I've been reading reading for quite a while but um the books that she started off with are nowhere near as good as the the her most recent series particularly this one um Girl Meets Duke bitch these books are amazing Thing. like her old ones are good they are but these these are like incredible they are hilarious they are steamy they, these things are just fucking perfect I I fucking love them I have this is an author that I have tried to go back and read all of her work because I started off with um like random ones here and there and just never really like I liked them but I never sought her out I would just go through her um the summaries on Goodreads until I found one that looked good and just had no interest in reading all of them. But like her last like three or four, bitch, some things have been on point. This one, um, we have the Duke of Ashbury who is this like kind of very broody and what's really hilarious about him is that he knows he's broody. That's how he identifies himself. He makes all these comments about like how, you know, I can't do such and such. I have a, I have an appointment. I have to go be broody in the corner for an hour. That kind of a thing. Um, he also curses using a lot of Shakespearean swears instead of like the traditional swears of that time which just makes him smart and broody and quirky and hilarious in this one he needs a wife and then the seamstress who made the dress for the woman who essentially left him at the altar canceled that betrothal whatever you want to call it shows up crazily enough in the wedding dress like I need payment for this and he's like well how about I marry you will that that work okay cool like we're not gonna touch each other but we're gonna be married and usually we're in this one the feet it's in historical romance novels like with these and the women are like we're not we're not sleeping together like I'm terrified in this one the heroine's like what well, you don't want to sleep with me let's see what we're gonna do about that because that's that's not acceptable fuck that I love this book so much and then the next one the governess game in which one of Emma's friends, Alexandra, met up or ran into this gentleman in a bookshop in this book and then later on um, she ends up going to his house answering an advertisement or an ad or I think he spoke to her and offered a job and he thought she was a governess. She showed up to fix his clocks and he's basically like, you're hired. And she's like, great. And he comes back with kids and she's like, what? wait a minute, what? The relationship with his two nieces in this book are damn hilarious. These little girls are like Wednesday Adams. They are creepy and morbid and just damned fucking funny. Their banter back and forth with the adults and then the adults banter is hilarious. Like when I tell you that reading both of these, I like literally laughed out loud. So like I don't know that I will go back necessarily and read, I will eventually read all of Tessa Dare's books, but it's kind of hard to knowing that they're not gonna be as good as these because these, 
there already were some of hers that I read that were just like, eh, but these though, these, so I already know there's going to be a difference, so I'm not super enthused to go back and read them, but everyone going here forward is an automatic buy, like, it's happening. If you want to get into historical, these would be the good, a good place to start, because they're historical, but they have like a modern sense of humor about them, so they won't, some people find historical romance dry, they don't bother me any, because I grew up reading them, I like them, but, if you've had trouble reading historical romance novels and you still want to try them, start with Tessa Dare's newer stuff. These are a perfect segue into historical romance for people who need to get a foot in the door. Alright guys, so those are my favorite romance authors. And they're just the ones that I have physical copy on hand because it is way too much work at this point to go in and get books off my Kindle and download, you know, the, the covers and edit that blah 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 when I am filming videos that have to go up today. So... Um, again, I do plan on filming probably a second version it has on my Kindle stuff, so that will be likely more contemporary than anything else. And then I will be filming one that has my favorite romances, like my favorite character romances, but that one's gonna need more research because I have stuff that I'm putting in that video, so they probably won't be in April, because in April I just need stuff I can hammer out. So I'm determined to get a video every day in April. I have seven more after this. Seven more. Whew! Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you tomorrow.